What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to New Hope Here. My name is David. I'm our online campus director. Welcome to the lobby. This is kind of our time to hang out uh, before the service starts. And with me today on the lobby is my good friend. You can say my name. Jordan. Yeah. Jordan knows that I like to introduce my guests. It's what he does best. Jordan, I've it is. recently it's learned. It's my t number one skill here <laughs> at New Hope. Jordan is our worship pastor for our Williston campus. Mm -hmm. um, you probably recognize him because he also leads worship a lot at New Hope here. So. Mm -hmm. Jordan, it's welcome to the time. lobby. Thank you. <clears throat> Big it's moment. always good to be in the chairs of blue. Yes. Teal. I don't, I don't think know. They were always blue. Before we switched our set to an actual set rather than just literally sitting <laughs> in the lobby, uh, I, I feel like one of them was gray. Producer was one of them. Were they both gray? Uh, there's a, I don't know. There were multiple. At least one gray. The colors chair. rotated. Yeah. And yeah, we've, we've, yeah, so now they're blue. And now it's the chairs of blue. Speaking of blue. <clears throat> oh boy. <laughs> Just getting over a, a cold. But speaking of blue, what color is our app, Jordan? It's the blue one. It's the blue one. You really should down. Hattie really wants you to download our app because she wants you to know that it's blue. So mm -hmm. go download the New Hope app. Uh, why should they get the app, Jordan? What's on the app? Well, <clears throat> one, you got uh, an ability to take notes along with the message. You can donate your giving right there. You have you a giving. Bible right there with yeah. it. You get notifications for upcoming events. You can watch the service right yeah. through the app. You there's a lot of reasons. Watch old services. The fine. real question, David, is why shouldn't you Ooh. download the app? Because there's so many good reasons for it. This is great. We, I think we need to film like a full, full length, 30 minute, like 90s style infomercial, infomercial <laughs> for the New Hope app. I think that needs to happen. If you want to see <clears throat> a full infomercial for the app, let us know. I don't know, know about 90 chat, minutes. Please. Maybe just I like said a... 30, I think I said 30 minutes. 90s style. Oh, because I feel like I, I feel like infomercials like, peaked long. in the '90s. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe I don't know. In At the like one thirty a.m. in the t early or on or just on Saturday. Yeah. Like if if uh, if Fox didn't have a football game till the afternoon, <laughs> you just got really sad in the in like the early in the late morning because it was just oh, infomercials. No. Well, same thing. I would get up to watch cartoons in the morning, and then I would yeah tell my mom we needed to buy some steak knives because that was what was on before the cartoon started. <laughs> It was always for me that gap. It was the cartoons are over and a football game hasn't started yet and it's nothing but infomercials. And I was just like, why is this happening? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but yes, so welcome to our New Hope app infomercial. It's the blue one. Yes. Not the Hawaii one. There's a Hawaii one? You, oh, you haven't been here when we've talked about There's a new, if you, if you just go to the app store and you search New Hope Church, one of the apps that comes up is New Hope Hawaii. And I have been trying to get transferred there ever since. I was going to say, is that, maybe I'm not the Williston <laughs> campus yeah. pastor. Well, our new Hawaii <laughs> campus worship pastor, Jordan. Aloha. Jordan, I very much like your Vikings jacket. Thank you. Uh, last Sunday, there was a Vikings game. There was. Uh, it was it, a game happened. And you happened. could call it a game. There were players and a ball. Uh, and we won. Yeah. Kind of. You know how a lot of times in sports you talk about how like we lost, but it was a moral victory? Mm -hmm. I think that Lions game was more we won, but it was a moral <laughs> loss. Oh my goodness. It was miserable. <clears throat> yeah, that was rough. But the only thing more miserable would have been losing to the Lions. So It's true. We have, we, we, you know, two steps forward, <laughs> five steps back kind of yeah. mentality. You we know? have so many people join us at New Hope here from all over the place. And so I feel a little more isolated with our New Hope Here family um, than, for instance, our New Hope Williston family because there's so many more Viking fans at New Hope Williston. Oh, that's North true. Dakota, a lot of Vikings fans. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so when I uh, express my pain and sorrow with all of you, I often get, you know, I don't know what the problem is. The Seahawks win all the time. And I'm like, cool, you'll never understand our pain. Uh, so it's nice to have you here repping the team that hurts me Thank you. so I mean, often. For all those fans who have, you know, <clears throat> relatively good teams that have been to Super Bowls recently, just remember that us Vikings fans are still complaining about a game that happened in 2009. And in 98 <laughs> and in 2001 and, yeah, yeah all, just, all, all of them. them. <laughs> My dad <clears throat> uh, does not watch Vikings games anymore starting in 2001. Oh, wow. So the 98 tragedy happened. If you're not familiar, if you might not be a football fan, the 98 Vikings were like the greatest like arguably one of the greatest football teams of all time. So good. The greatest offense ever with this amazing defense. <clears throat> and they, in spectacular Vikings uh, manner, blew 
the NFC Championship game. And it was, it was heartbreaking and painful. And then in 2001, we lost another NFC Championship game, 41 to zero. And that's the last- That is Viking, heartbreaking. That is the last Vikings game my dad watched. Ended on a high note. <laughs> he, yeah. He's just like, it just ruins my day. There's no reason. He just reads about it after. That's very mature of him. And I, well, yeah. Well, I've always made fun of him for that. I'm like, I'll never do that. And then every year I'm like, maybe. Yeah, that Lions game might have been it for me. <clears throat> I'm going to stick with it for now. But maybe, you know, he's old. Hi, Dad. He, he watches a lot of the time. He joins us at New Hope here. Hi, Dad. <clears throat> uh, so maybe when I'm older, uh, I'll join that. But have you ever stopped... <clears throat> question for you. Have you ever Ooh. stopped doing something that you love uh, because it just was the the negative that it brought was more? So like, <clears throat> yeah. for instance, uh, you might have become lactose intolerant and ice cream is your favorite food. Ooh. And you chose to stop eating ice cream because that's of a, the that's lactose. A good example. I'm not going to go into detail. That's, it. that's a good example because I am lactose intolerant. <clears throat> Do you like ice cream? No, I don't like ice cream, oh. but I really like mac and Gosh, cheese. Like and I'm trying to, well, I mean, it, I, it's fine. But I mean, I don't. That's not the issue. I just eat cheese all the time. Do they? Yeah. So I got to eat less cheese. Do they so make? Do they make example. like lactose-free milk? They do, and that's do they fine. Make lactose-free cheese. They do, uh, and it's okay. Okay. It's not like the worst, but it doesn't like. You just have to think of it differently. Can you make mac and cheese out of it? I haven't tried that yet, so could be good. Could be good. Well, this is. <laughs> Someone recommend Dine, some yeah. good <laughs> recommend lactose-free. lactose-free macaroni for. Yeah. I just love pasta and I love cheese, so. <clears throat> yeah, I do love pasta, but you can have good pasta with no cheese. That's true. There's some great pasta. Yeah. Uh, I would love to hear if you like pasta, <laughs> post in the chat. <clears throat> no, I do want to encourage you though, <clears throat> excuse me, with just a few minutes before the service gets started, uh, to jump in the chat today. <clears throat> I want to see how many people we can get that connect in the chat. Last mm -hmm. week was really cool. Um, it was probably the, the most engagement I had seen in the chat in a while uh, in our first live service. So um, <clears throat> it's really fun seeing you guys connect with each other and letting us know where you're joining us from and things like that. We had a, we had a prize a couple weeks ago. Ooh. Uh, Olivia was on for the first time, her okay. first time on the lobby. Very fun. And she offered a prize to, it wasn't the coolest place. Hattie does the coolest place and then she just arbitrarily picks whichever one she thinks was the coolest. <laughs> Olivia just did a drawing. It was just everybody who posts where they're worshiping from, Ooh. and she did a drawing. I don't have a prize. Did you bring a prize? Um, just my my good attitude. All right, Jordan will give you a good attitude if you jump in the chat right now and post. And you should pick, <clears throat> I wanna do the Hattie method. I like picking just what I think is You're the gonna coolest arbitrary, place. So Jordan will arbitrarily pick who is worshiping from the coolest place, and he will have a good attitude about it. The coolest place is Maybe. Regina, Canada. I actually really like Regina, it's really, Canada. It's really cool. I had never, bed until we moved up here. And then uh, Jeff at the donut shop, Ooh. Uh, who makes really good donuts. Great donuts. Go Go oh Donuts, my if you're ever in Williston, North Dakota. I think this is the second time we've done a plug Not a for, sponsor. for Go Go Donuts on the lobby, but for, like like ridiculously good. Phenomenal. <clears throat> um, but I got to know him and his wife, and they suggested that we go up there. So before Matilda was born, when we just had late and we went up there. It's a really cool it's city. It's really fun. That's the coolest I would not place, have guessed. But that's you, some... you, if you're not there, still let me know where you're coming from because you yes. might be in the second coolest place. Yeah, who knows what other cool Saskatchewan towns <laughs> there are. Estevan. Right? You actually know more. Let's see, this is... Weyburn. You're from this area. I don't know anything. I don't know places. anything else about Canada there's other really, than the drive to <clears throat> Regina, though. There's a real, this won't help you, lactose intolerance. <laughs> this <laughs> won't help you, lactose. <laughs> I'm gonna call you lactose for now. So rude. there's a really cool ice cream shop in uh, in Regina. Oh really? What is it called? It's like a just Dairy a, Queen. It, yeah, it's, it's called Dairy Queen. It's crazy. You, you won't believe, believe it. They put candy in their ice cream. It's nuts. Uh, no, it's <clears throat> it's like an old timey place. Just like the walk up window. Okay. You know and yeah. Oh man, it's delicious. So check that out if you're ever in. If, if you're, you're in joining the us from, place. <clears throat> from the ice cream shop in Regina. Please take let a, us know. Take a picture, yeah. They have a really cool downtown, though, and, and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of good restaurants and stuff. It's a cool place. And in, and in the winter, like it's it. just a cold place. Well, whether <laughs> you're joining us from Regina, Saskatchewan, or anywhere else, we're so excited that, that you're uh, worshiping with us at New Hope here today. Um, 
that what we were just talking about was we, we would love to see you jump in the chat and connect with each other. So mm -hmm. easiest first thing for us all to just jump in the chat is just here's where I'm worshiping from, who's, who, here's who's with me today. So I want to encourage everybody to do that today. Let's see how many people we can get connecting and engaging. And uh, I'll be in there probably. I'm probably in Williston, North Dakota. Yeah. That's probably what I'm saying. So right now, I'm not too bad. Williston, North Dakota. No, I like Williston, North Dakota as well. So thank you again for joining <laughs> us. Uh, we have an awesome service today. Our, our series, Stop Going to Church, continues. Um, so uh, we will see you a little bit later in the service. And thanks for being here. Well, hey, church, welcome to New Hope here. We're so excited that you joined us for worship today. Our series on Stop Going to Church continues. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be in Acts 5 today. Pastor Mike's preaching on Ananias and Sapphira. So it's going to be another <laughs> challenge. It's going to be another great but challenging message. Um, so we're just so excited that you're here. I want to encourage you to go in the chat right now uh, or go to our website, newhopehere.com, and fill out a connect card. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can connect with us on there. You can indicate if you're interested in joining a group or figuring out what your next step is, things like that. So really want to encourage you to fill out that connect card. Yeah, and if you're new too you can yes. let us know that way you can also if you're new post in the chat and we have a gift we to do. send you is so it, is it an nft what's an nft is that like those digital things you know it's, it is, it's just a photo of michael actual, yeah <laughs> surprise no <laughs> no it, uh actually we have a it's a new hope here mug, mug yeah so, we're really yeah. excited to send that out to you so yeah let us know on that connect card or in the chat if you're new and uh, also on the connect card, you can indicate if you're interested in starting point. Right. Whether you're new or you've been here a while, but you haven't got connected yet, we would love to connect with you in starting point. We had our first online starting point two weeks ago now. Mm -hmm. It was super fun. Uh, we have another one coming up on November 7th. Uh, and so we really want to encourage you to check that out. There's a link in the chat. You can get signed up for that as well. Yeah. So let's jump into worship. Well, welcome New Hope here. We're excited to see you. Let's worship together.
continue in worship by giving back to God his tithes and our offerings and by doing so it's a great way to show that we trust God with what he has trusted us with in the first place so easiest way to do that is click the link in the chat another way uh, that we haven't highlighted much is by texting to give and you can text your dollar amount to 84321 and as always, we want to pray with you today. So if you have something that's weighing on your heart um, or a way that you want us to be praying for you, you can click that button that's in the chat right now. And we have people alive and ready uh, and just waiting to pray for you. Also, last week, someone put their prayer requests right in the chat. Um, and the community was just able to pray for them right there. So make sure you include that. We would love to pray for you, hear what's going on in your life. Uh, you can also put your prayer requests on uh, your Connect card as well. And we'll make sure to pray for you during uh, next week. Uh, but let's take a moment and 
and pray right now. Uh, God, we just uh, are so grateful for uh, this community of believers and uh, how we can gather every week um, and just praise you, God, and pray with one another and grow in our relationship with you. And Lord, as we enter into the message time today, I pray that it would just be a time of encouragement for each of us, uh, that we would learn that you are indeed a good God and that you have good things for us. And so I pray that you would just help us to um, hear your words, God, uh, help us to put those things into practice and, and use them uh, to just really go and be the church to the people around us uh, who are needing that most. And Lord, uh, we're just so thankful for how you provide for us. Um, the things that you've blessed us with. God, we pray that you just take this offering and use it uh, for your will, God. Um, yeah, and again, just to reach the people around us who are in need of, of hearing your message. And so, Lord, thank you for this time together. We love you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm Matt Ray, and I've been uh, serving New Hope for seven plus years. I serve at the Tioga Church. Um, I'm part of the Setup Teardown crew and wherever else they need me, whether it's a greeter or at some of the tables and booths. I like to be part of the community. Um, I think the Tioga Church is an important part of this community and um, I, I do believe that being part of the church that you should be part of the service in any way you can help out. Serving with others is great. I mean, our small little team here is really close-knit. Um, we come here every Sunday. It's the same group of guys and girls that we come and we get this thing set up about 45 minutes. Um, it's great to have the, the relationships that we're building with them. And uh, it's just, it really is nice to have someone on your side. It's not a complex thing that we do here. Um, the setup for the lights, the cameras, the stage, um, it's real easy. It doesn't take too long to do it. And then there's always someone here to help you out with any of your questions, um, which is, you know, what we're all here about is be part of the body. Um, being part of, the, of Tioga's church, I mean, here we, you know, at, we, we do, we set up, we, we pray together, then we, we get to, you know, enjoy each other's company again, um, be part of, of something more than just us. I mean, this community really does need a church around it, and uh, we've got lots of people to reach out to. And together we're just doing one small part of making sure this church operates every Sunday um, together. And then we get to go on and like today we have a potluck, which is really, really cool. My life's been impacted by serving um, just to the part that God works through me. Um, it gives me the opportunity to do that. It also gives me the opportunity to just get closer to God uh, um, and with uh, devotion times and just being part of this, this church body and, and small groups that we and my wife put on. Um, so it just uh, really has helped me become closer to God. Well, welcome to week five of Stop Going to Church. And I want to welcome you here at New Hope Here, wherever here is for you this week. And in this series, we're asking what the church, what a follower of Jesus is supposed to look like, is supposed to act like, is supposed to think like, really, who we're supposed to be. Because the truth is, truth is, isn't it, that so many people have gotten confused about what the church is. And it's become just a thing we do. It's become just a place we go, whether it's online, whether it's a campus, in person, whatever. And listen, that was never God's plan for your life. It was never God's plan for the church. And the truth is, if you just go to church, you're going to miss out on God's best for you. You're going to miss out on God's best for the church. That's why we're calling this Stop Going to Church. So grab your Bible and turn to the book of Acts. And if you aren't sure how to find the book of Acts, it's about five books into the New Testament, second part of the Bible, right after the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the stories of Jesus. The book of Acts tells the story, the history of how the church began and how it began to grow. And this is, this is why 
why it's so important for us to look at the early church, because this is the church when it was kind of in its purest form, certainly not perfect in any way, shape, or form. But it's where we can kind of get a glimpse of the DNA of the church as close to God's original plan before we started adding all kinds of things to it. We're going to be in Acts chapter 5, so I hope you can find it. In Acts chapter 5, let me just set this up where we've been. So in the early church, amazing things have happened. Lives have been changed. Marriages have been saved. People were being healed. Addictions were overcome. Fearful people became bold people like we talked about recently. The list went on and on and on. And I love the stories about the early church in the book of Acts. They're so encouraging. They're so amazing. Honestly, they're kind of fun. But when you turn to Acts chapter 5, it changes. Acts chapter 5 isn't a fun Bible bedtime story. This isn't one of those stories that you go, I'm going to read a a, a good feel-good story about the early church. It isn't a cheerleader story. This is a story that has, it's kind of dark. It, It raises some serious questions. But it does show us about what the heart of a follower of Jesus is supposed to look like. So let's just start. Acts chapter 5, verse 1. Here's how it starts, and we'll get the backstory from here. Now, a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, also, circle that word also, sold a piece of property. So before we go any further, and I don't want, I'm not going to stop in every verse, I promise. We just need to get the picture for this. Because we need to understand what's happening. We just talked about how the church began. And in chapter 4, we, we read about all kinds of things that were happening in the life of the church. And we're introduced at the end of chapter 4 to a guy who sold a piece of property. In fact, here's what it says. I'll put it up here on the screen so we can kind of all read it together. It says, Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the, apostle, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. So before we get to the story of Ananias and Sapphira, we need to understand all these incredible things were happening in the life of the church. Lives are being changed. And and like we just talked about, we go on through the list again. And this guy by the name of Joseph just got so excited about what God was doing. He just felt a prompting that God was saying, just respond out of love and generosity. So beyond, beyond and above his regular giving, he sold a piece of property. And he took all of the proceeds and he brought them to the apostles because I mean, they were new. There was really no protocol for this. How do we do this? What do we do? So he brought it to them and just gave it to them. And you could kind of hear this. You know, you can kind of picture the story. The apostles were saying, oh, you want to give kind of your profit? And he said, no, I want to give all the money from the sale of it. You mean even your cost? Yeah. Not just like 50% or, or you know, 80%. No, I, I think God wants me to give it all. And you can kind of hear them responding, Wow. That's, that's incredibly generous. What do you want? I don't want anything. In fact, you don't even need to recognize me. That's okay. God just prompted me, and God has done so much for me, and I see him doing so much for other people that I want to respond in love. And it was just so encouraging to the life of the church that they gave him a nickname. They gave him the nickname Barnabas. And we read the scripture, Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. And what you do when you show up, you just encourage us. In fact, you kind of hear this say, when we write down the history of the early church, your name's going to be in it. Your name's going to be in the Bible. So here's the picture. Okay. When Ananias and Sapphira heard about Barnabas, when they heard about him, they didn't respond in the same way Barnabas did of saying, wow, God's telling us to give something. They said, we want a piece of that. We want, we want our name in the Bible. We want, we want to be given nicknames that make everybody smile. And they kind of, you kind of picture them looking at each other going, yeah, we've got that old piece of property. You know, it's not worth a whole lot, but, but let's sell it. And well, you know, there's going to be closing costs on it. And there's going to be you know, a couple of other things. So you know, we'll, we'll give part of it. But we don't need to tell anybody we just gave part of it. I mean, they'll never know, right? Because we want to... We want a kind of attention that Barnabas got. So they agreed. They sold a piece of property and they took the amount, not all of it, the amount that the two of them agreed on and they brought it back to the church. And that's where we read on. We read on. 
here in about verse 3. It, in verse 3, it says, An uh, uh, well, just before this, it says, Ananias brought this piece of property. And Peter responds to him. Here's what Peter says. Peter says, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you've lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Now, we don't know how Peter knew that. We don't know if God kind of whispered in his heart, Peter, he's lying, or if someone who had involved in the sale, you know, was saying, you know what, they, they aren't telling the whole truth. And Peter just kind of called him on the carpet. And because, and catch this, because Ananias publicly said, this is how much we're giving, Peter calls him out publicly. It was very appropriate. It was very appropriate. In fact, let's read on verse 4. It says, didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You've not lied just to human beings, but to God. What he's saying there is, you could have given 50%. That's okay. You could have given 2%, 1%, half a percent. That's okay. And that would have been incredible. But your, your wish was not to give back to God and respond in love. Your desire was to deceive for personal attention. And what came next, nobody expected. Peter didn't expect it. We can read in what he said. He didn't make it happen. He didn't declare it to happen. Let's, let's read on. Verse 5, when Ananias heard these words, he fell down and he died. Can you imagine? Peter calls him out and he's waiting for Ananias to respond. And Ananias grabs his chest and bam, falls down dead. And everybody goes, what, what, what just happened? This wasn't Peter's or anyone else's expectation. And they all recognized in a moment, this was God. In fact, that's what it says next. It says, and great fear seized all who heard what had happened. You think it changed how they took offerings from then on? You know, when, when the offering plates were passed, it was like, I, I, I'm giving what I give. I'm not lying about it. Lightning didn't happen. I'm still alive. You know, do you think it changed? And then it says, verse 6, Then some young, young men came forward, they wrapped up his body, and they carried it out, and, he buried, and they buried him. And it says, about three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. So you get the picture. His wife was waiting at home, waiting for Ananias to come home and say, You should hear the nickname that they gave us. We're going to get our names in, you know, in the Bible when they, when they start writing the history of the early church. And he didn't come home, and she thought, Well, maybe he's out partying, so I want to go join the party. She went back. And then Peter, in verse 8, stops her. And you can almost hear the pleading in Peter's voice. This wasn't judgmental. This wasn't accusatory. I don't think it's that way because we can read how Peter wrote about these kinds of moments elsewhere and how he talked about these kinds of moments elsewhere. And he says, basically, Sapphira, tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? And she doesn't hesitate. Well, yeah, I mean... Because I, I know what he told you. That's the price. And Peter wasn't trying to set her up. And I can almost hear him just with sadness. Saying in verse 9, How could you conspire to test the Spirit of the Lord? And again, he knew how God viewed deceit. Listen, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door. And they'll carry you out also. I wonder if you said those words with tears. And at that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young men came in. Can you picture it? I mean, there's a little bit of dark humor in this. They came in. It's like, another body? Really? What's this church coming to? And they carried her out, and they buried her beside her husband. And then the great understatement in this whole passage, verse 11. Look at this. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. Can you picture the life of the church? Up to this point in time, everything was going good. They, they saw God work. They saw people being healed. In fact, the, the religious power that were trying to, to put them down had kind of been pushed back, and everything was going great, and, and everything was going good. God was at work, and then, then this. And they all just kind of stop and go, what just happened? They were doing life with people. A lot of people who were very different from them. 
and they, people that they never would have hung out with if, if it wasn't for God. These people were family. These were people they loved. They, the, in the church itself, it talks about they experienced the best economics. They experienced the best. They're experiencing some of the best living standards. They're experiencing, we would say, their best life now. And following God just made like they were invincible. Everything was going to go great. And now they were all left going, what is this? This is fear. This is uncertainty. Does that sound familiar, by the way? It's thought about how we've experienced life as a church around the world recently, and maybe in our part of the world. Everything was good. It felt like we were growing, and then something happened. Certainly maybe not as extreme as you know, someone dropping dead in service, but COVID shut everything down, and we're left with some uncertainty. And it's just, what's happening? But as I read this story... I recognize it was meant to be, both for them and for us, a wake-up call. Are you just going to church to mark off a list, to get attention, to make yourself feel good, and to get get other people's uh, idea of who you are and to manage your image? Or are you going to church for something more? We're going to talk about that for just a moment, but this this. This story brings up questions, doesn't it? And you've probably got a slew of them. There's there's two big ones. Let me just give us two quick answers to two of the biggest questions. And you can fill in your notes and then we'll get back to, to kind of the point of the story. Here's the first one. Is God really a mean and angry God? Does he strike people down? And the answer is no. But he is rightly jealous. And that's a real good thing. I know. You might say, isn't jealousy a sin? Yeah, it can be. But also, jealousy can be a very good thing when the intention is not to control, but to protect. Think of the first commandment of the Ten Commandments. What did God say of the first commandment of the Ten Commandments? Have no other gods before me. Why would he say that? It's because he wants to protect our relationship with him. He wants to protect our hearts. In the New Testament, in the New Testament, God defines, God uses the symbolism of marriage to describe our relationship with him and the fact that he wants to protect us, protect our relationship among all other things. I think of my relationship with Kylie, my marriage with Kylie. And she, she I belong to her, she belongs to me. We are together and, and we are jealous of our relationship, not of each other. We're jealous of our relationship. We will protect that marriage. We'll protect our hearts will protect one another from things that will that will infect our marriage and that's a very good thing and that's what God was doing in this moment God was saying listen church I won't always act this way but right at the beginning here I want you to understand ego pride managing your image they're going to poison the church they're going to poison your relationship with me and I want to show you how serious I take this So right at the beginning, he was setting the standard. Here's the second second question. Isn't this story just about money? (laughs) Because it feels that way, isn't it? Well, if I don't give my offering, God's going to be mad. And, And the reality is, it's not about money. It's about honesty and deceit, not our wallets. And you say, well, the Bible talks a lot about money. Why? Because God wants our heart, not our wallet. But what has our heart more often than God does? Our wallet does. It says very clearly, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In chapter 4, we saw the church applauding a core value, generosity of Barnabas saying, this stuff that I have is not going to own me. It's not going to own me. In fact, I, God's going to own me. and I want to respond to him. And they responded back to him. And Ananias and Sapphira come in and they say, you know what? We want some of that. We want some of the honor. And what were they doing? They were trying to manage their image. This was not about money. This was about them managing their image. Let's just be honest. A lot of us have approached church the same way Ananias and Sapphira have. We go to church and we Go to church, maybe to make sure we look good in the community. Maybe when someone asks us how we're doing at church and we we don't want to give the wrong answer, we want to make sure we look good. We want to make sure we look moral, that 
that everybody thinks we're, we're spiritual enough. We kind of live like the list people. And that's what Ananias and Sapphira were, were, were living like. I mean, just think whether you attend and join New Hope here online every week with us or in person. Why is it for a lot of us, the biggest conflicts happen in times when we're trying to get ready to be in church, to turn it on the, t- you know, on the TV and watch, or to get to church in person. Maybe you've tried to get to church in person, say, we're going to go to the early service, and by the time everybody or the, all the work calls come in, you barely make it to the last service, and you're grumpy, you're tired, you're ticked off, and someone, when you, when you walk in church, says, how are you doing? And, and your response is, oh, I need to look good. I'm doing fine. And you go, I just lied in church wonder what would happen if we were more honest. Not vomit our problems all over everyone, but if we were more honest. And when someone asks how you're doing, say, you know what? <laughs> it's been a cruddy morning. It kind of sucks. Well, why is that? What happened? Well, you don't need to know. It's family business. It's none of your business. But I'm just going to be honest with you. I, I wonder if church would change. Why do we feel the need to manage our images? Why do we feel the need to control our stuff? And I think it comes down to How we answer a question that we don't even know we're asking, but we all ask it. Here's the question. Who's the owner of my image, my life, of me, of the stuff of my life, and who is good enough to be trusted with what is good for me? Who's good enough to be trusted with what's good for me? And and here's the truth. We've all answered that question. And we all act that way. In fact, there's four different ways we answer that question. Let me just give them to you real quick. Four views that we choose to how we view life, our possessions, and our image. First one is the owner. We say, it's mine to do with as I please. My life is mine. The stuff is mine. I've earned this money. My image is mine. No one else can be trusted with this, right? Or maybe we view it as a borrower. I'll bring it back in the same condition I've got it. We recognize that God's, got, God's in this, that my life isn't my own. And so we kind of view it like I'm borrowing life from God. I borrowed a chainsaw from a friend several years ago before I had my, my own chainsaw. And he was one of these guys that he had like every tool there is, but they're all in pristine, perfect, spotless condition. And I brought it back and I'm like, I don't even want to use it. I don't want to get it dirty. And so after I cut the tree down that I cut, I you know, rubbed it all down, cleaned it all off. And why? Because I wanted to make sure he got it back in the condition to use it. And when, when you view it, your life as a borrower, it's like, I need to be careful not to tick God off. Or some of us view our life as a renter. I'll do my part and you do your part. We kind of view it like it's a contract. You know, I've rented a car and I got the insurance on it and I'll be careful. I'm not going to intentionally crash it, but it's a contract. If I do crash it, there's insurance and your insurance will cover it. It's not my car. And we kind of view God that way. I recognize that my life isn't necessarily my own, so I'm going to do certain things. And then God, I expect you to do certain things with it. Come on. You know, and there's some churches that teach this. If I act a certain way, if I pray a certain way, if I do a certain thing, then God has to respond that way. And it's really, they're saying, we're just renters. We're in a contract with God. And God has to respond a certain way because of the way we responded. But none of those ways are the way God intended the church to be. None of those ways are are the ways that God intended us to be as his friends and his followers and part of his family. We, he wants us to be managers. And what's a manager? A manager is, is, says, I'm expected to take care of your things. I recognize my life. I didn't start my life. God started my life. He gave me creativity. He gave me my, my personality, my, the stuff of my life. He taught me and gave me the ability to earn a living. The, the things in my life, my kids are not my own. They were entrusted to me. My marriage is not my own. They're entrusted to me. All of The stuff of my life, even my image, was a gift from God. And listen, he wants me to partner with him to use the stuff that he gave and and to make it even better. He stamped us in his image to be creative and to to grow with him. And so he wants to teach us how to grow what he's given us. See, here's the truth about you and me. All of us have made a choice to view the stuff of our life, to view the image of our life in one of these ways. 
The question is, which way are you acting? Are you saying, it's mine, I can only trust me. Or you know what, I'm just scared of God. Or I'm going to do what I do, God better show up and do what he does. Or it's God, you've, you've just amazingly given me life. And would you teach me how to do with it what it's meant to, what, what my life is meant to do? And together we'll do some things better. This last summer we hosted the Global Leadership Summit, and it's always incredible. And this year was, was incredible as well. And the very last speaker, his name was Albert Tate, asked a question that I've been thinking about ever since. And I won't say it exactly the way he said it, but basically said, what if this season, this season of COVID that we've just come through and in some sense are still in, what if instead of the problem, what if it was the teaching to teach us what really mattered and now we get to apply it? And I've been thinking about that. What if some of the economic challenges that we've gone through were meant to teach us what really matters and who is the owner and who is really trustworthy and good enough? What if time with friends and family, what if our lives that we try to protect and we try to fight for our rights, what if God was really saying, your life is not your own and let me teach you how to live it best. But of course it goes back to the question, doesn't it? Let's go back to a question. Who's the owner? Is he or am, or am I? And who's good enough to be trusted with what I think is good for me? The truth is most of us are convinced, yeah, that maybe it's from God, but I'm not sure I can fully trust him. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to manage it. Here's the question. Will you trust that he's good enough? Because only he is good enough. And your life will only be experienced at its best when you trust him. And he takes this seriously. The story of Ananias and Sapphira, that tells us. He is jealous of his relationship with you. And he wants you to learn that he knows what's good for you and that you can trust him. Listen, if you've never asked Jesus to be the forgiver of your sins and leader of your life, I want to invite you to do that right now. You just begin with a very simple prayer. Jesus, I recognize that I've tried to live my life my own way as the owner, as the renter, as the borrower. You know, I've had a wrong perspective. And I ask for you to forgive me. Would you forgive me? And right now, I just ask that you would teach me to trust your leadership. Teach me to live life the way it was meant to be lived. To not just go to church, to not just go through the motions of life, but to be the person that you designed for me to be. You can pray a simple prayer. God, forgive me and help me to learn to follow your leadership. If you prayed that prayer right now in the chat, maybe you've never posted in the chat, I want to invite you to do that. We're going to put a link where you can share with us that you prayed that prayer with us. And we won't come hunt you down or whatever. We just want to help you with your next steps because that's the first step in learning to trust that God is good enough to be trusted with the leadership of your life. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you so much for those that right now made a decision to trust you with the leadership of their life. And even some of us who have followed you, Jesus, all of our life, we still struggle with this. And so for all of us, help all of us right now to just make this a moment of surrender. Do I trust you? Do I trust you? Are you good enough? God, help me to be a manager, to hold things loosely and not try to manage my image, my stuff, but to follow your plan, your design for my life. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Hey, church, thank you again so much for joining us for worship today. It was another awesome week of our series, Stop Going to Church. Another great message from Pastor Mike, challenging message from yeah. Pastor Mike. And at the end, Pastor Mike kind of gave you an opportunity, if you haven't accepted Jesus as your Savior yet, to, to do so, or if, or if maybe you needed to rededicate your life to Christ. And uh, so first thing we want to do, if that's you and you prayed with Pastor Mike today, we want to celebrate yes, with you. Yes, we're we so are, excited we for you. We are so excited. It's Good. the best decision you will ever make, the most important decision you'll ever make. And so uh, congratulations for that. And we want to help you. We want to come alongside you. We 
and figure out what your next step is. And so if you didn't already click that button uh, in the chat for salvation, go ahead and click that now. Or just fill out a Connect card and let us know that you prayed with Pastor Mike. We would love to to talk to you, connect with you, and help you figure out what your next step is. Yeah, and we believe that everybody have an, has a next yes, step. So definitely. whether uh, that's your first time deciding to follow Jesus or you've been following Jesus for a long time, uh, we just want to be able to help you in that. And so uh, maybe that's joining a small group for yeah. the first time or re, uh, rejoining a small group after a break. Um, or maybe uh, you want to start serving yeah. with New Hope here or starting a gathering uh, with people who are um, worshiping where you're yeah. at, inviting them or into your Or joining home. us at Starting Point yes, in, yes. in a few weeks. Uh, which is coming what? up on November 7th. Yeah, so uh, whatever that is. We've got lots of opportunities. Yeah. So we really want to encourage you in that. Um, uh, again, click that button in the chat. Um, we'd love to reach out to you and offer you some of those. Um, or you can mark it on your Connect card. Or if you don't know, again, uh, put that on your Connect card or put yeah. it in the chat, and we'd love to help uh, walk through those as well. Definitely. Thank you guys again so much for joining us for worship. Hopefully we'll see you next week.